what is an ID, what is a class? Who can tell me what a, a CSS is? CSS, what is it? So mm -hmm. it helps in the design of the website. Mm -hmm. But everything in life helps with the design of the website. So what are you? It helps um a programmer to design his website. Any other views? Are there any other views? So I have 20 people here, and none of you have any views. So please, the question again. What is CSS? The CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. I didn't hear what to say. I already heard it, 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 it allowed you to do the, the line to enter it. It allows you to do what? I thought you guys to read it. Oh, yeah, you can unmute, Gabriel. Just unmute and talk. All I hear is uh, it allows you. I don't hear the other parts of the allows you. Change of variable. Yes, I can hear you. What is it? Um, it's used to store web pages. It's used to store web pages. Okay. Style. Style web pages. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is used to design, style, and format your web pages. Go ahead and format your web pages. So CSS allows you to design, format, and style your web pages. But the word in CSS stands for cascading. If they tell you something is cascading, it means that thing is falling or it is trembling down in a very, very elaborate way. So cascading style sheets goes to talk about they are one style sheet on top of the other, on top of the other, as if it is falling down. But they are all one grouped together to help you style a particular page or website or web thing in which you are doing. The div tag allows you to divide or separate or segment a particular section of code. The div is, if you're using our imagination, the div is like an empty container that is made of rubber. So you can see that if something is made of rubber, like the pure water rubber in which um, you used to buy, the one in which you pour water in and then you tie it. You see that anything you want to do with that rubber, even if you take pure water rubber itself, Anything you want to do, but you can make it flat, you can make it round, you can plug holes in it, you can play around with the rubber. And any shape you try and form with the rubber, the rubber will be elastic enough to form that shape. And that is what the div tag allows us to do. It allows us to create shapes and sections 
and divisions with our code. Remember that human beings by nature can take um, information in various sections. So it means that if you put your code in sections, it allows you to be able to uh, relate the information you want better. Another thing which is important to us is these two things here, which is the ID and the class. What is ID? What is class? Now, ID is the unique identifier of an element. So if I have an ID of an element, I am uniquely ID <clears throat> I am uniquely identifying that particular element. What does unique identification mean? In this class, over here, let's say I have two people who were born, if they were born on Friday, let, uh, who, who here was born on Friday? Nobody here was born on Friday. Anyone here born on Friday? Okay, so we have two people born here on Friday. And uh, since I was also born on Friday, means that they'll get some nice five marks for themselves. Darlington, you reduce your hand with immediate effect. So I've saved your info and I'll, I'll, I'll give you your five marks. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, so now those two people have, so all of us have Kofi. So it means that if at any point in time I shout Kofi, it is assumed that I am calling on one of us. Be honest. It is assumed I'm calling on one of us to come. Now, how do I uniquely separate each of you? It's through the index number. That is why each student here has an index number. For example, last year, there was a student called Albert oh, uh, Emmanuel Corte. Okay? And what? there were two students who were all called Emmanuel Corte. And because they had the same name, the school gave them all one portal name, one learning center name, and one school fees name. So it means when the other person pays his fees, it goes into Emmanuel, this is Emmanuel Lampe, goes to Emmanuel Lampe. And when the other person also pays, it goes to Emmanuel Lampe. So both of them were paying the fees into one individual. Until the school found out that there were two different people before they had to separate. But in retrospect, uniquely identifying someone means that whenever I mention that name, you alone should have that name, and you alone should be the one using that information that is provided. Is that clear? Are there any questions? No, sir. Yes, sir. So for class name, it uniquely identifies a group of people. It uniquely identifies a group of people. So for example, all of you here are cybersecurity group B. So if I want to call on you guys, I'll call on you guys as cybersecurity group B. 
So that is how I would uniquely identify you people. Okay, exactly. So remember, ID to uniquely identify a group. Um, ID to uniquely identify a group. Um, I'm so sorry. Today I'm in the office. So every 15 seconds, someone walks in and I'm alone here for some reason. So please forgive me. Please forgive me. Anyway, this is the distinction between an ID and a group. And let's remember that for ID, it is represented using the hash symbol. For class, we represent that using the dot. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, with that knowledge in mind, how will I describe CSS? CSS will be described in this format where you have the selector, the property, and the value. So if this is my CSS environment, I have the yeah. selector, I have the selector, the property, and the value. Anyway, so here we have selector, whereby we have uh, the selector. And then what is the selector? The selector is either a tag, an ID, or a class, or a combination of all of these. Okay, so if I have a combination of all of these things, I can use that as a, as a selector. My job when I'm doing CSS is to target particular elements. So I'm either targeting the elements using an ID, using a unique identifier of an element, or using a unique identifier of a group of what? Elements. So my job is to target the element and give it its properties, so every single element has a set of properties, like the color, the shape, the, the, the font size, the, 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 the decoration, all of those things are things which go with every single element. And for each property, there is a value. For example, if I say it has a, a, a font size, and I'm saying the font size is 20 pixels, the 20 pixels becomes its value. And then the font size, comes its um, property. So I would be using these three things to create CSS styles in and around what I am doing. Mm. So Lord Kate is for unmuting yourself and making noise for no apparent reason than just unmuting yourself. Your final grade, you have minus 10. Because I told you already, stupidity will not be, I, I don't think, certain forms of stupidity at all. So, Lord, itself, you have minus 10. Mm. Don't worry. And in the morning class, there was another guy there who ends with seven. So, Lord, this is your ID. You have minus 10. Not from your class score. If I mark the exam, I mark your class score, I combine them. That mark have minus 10 from there. Yeah, I didn't realize it. And next time, realize. 
Anyway, we are going to have an example of everything we have done. And we are going to learn two HTML elements too in addition. Of course, we are going to learn the div, what is the div, and but we are going to learn the A tag, and we are also going to learn the link tag, and learn what we use the A tag for, once we use the link tag for, and how we can implement it in our code and what we do. So I'm going to go to my desktop. In my desktop, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call the folder group B because you guys are group B. And then inside group B, I'm going to open this in my VS code. Open it in my VS code. So I have code space dot. So here I have my VS code open. In here, I'm going to create an index.html file. In here again, I'm going to create a style.css file. So now I have an HTML file here. I have a style file here. In here again, I have another folder, which I'm going to call pages. And inside pages, I'm going to create about.html. I'm also going to create contact.html. And I'm also going to create services.html. services.html. Remember, the thing I did with the code dot, if you don't have Windows 11, you can't do that. So it's best to just go to file and open folder and open it from there. But in my file, when I go here, my refresh, I can see that I have index style, a folder. Inside the folder, I have three things there over there for me. So that is what I have. Now in here, I need the basic structure of a HTML page, yes? So I need the basic structure of a HTML page, which is given to us by HTML. Here we have the head tag, have the title tag over here. Then in here, I have the body tag, and then I have the closed body over here. Now, of course, in my title tag, I'm going to put here home page. Everybody knows that this is my home page. Of course, the code should be replicated in the about page. It should be replicated in the contact page. And it should be replicated inside the services page. Okay, wonderful. So I have these pages all done. Now the idea is this. When I go and click on my home page, right? Over here, it gives me a blank page that does not have anything over there. So now I must put things here for me to be able to communicate with my other pages. In order for me to do that, I must go to my index page. So I'm in my index page. And inside my index page, I have nav over here. And in here, I have um, div. And in here, I have a ul. So inside my nav, I have these two things there. Are we okay? These two things there. The nav is going to have a class of heading. So it means the group name for this is going to be called heading. And then for the U 
L is going to have a class name of nav space links. So this is also going to be the group name for this. Now, inside my heading, I'm going to have a heading for, and then in here, I'm going to have a navigation, navigation space bar. So over here, I have navigation bar. Then inside the UL, I'm going to have my list items. So I have one, two, three, four list items. This here is going to be home. This here is going to be about. This here is going to be contact. And then this here is going to be services. Or normally, the contact will be the last one. So let's put the contact over here. So we have this. Remember, the class is being recorded. So after the class, everything here would be sent to you guys to rewatch and redo. Redo. Good. And as you can see, every line I write, I explain to you what that line is about. So on my screen now, I should be having something that looks like this, where I have navbar and then one about us, that, that, that. Great. But the problem is that these things here are all going to be A tags. So over here, I have A tags running through here. And then over here, if I've opened the A tag, I must what? Close my A tag. So I'll close my A tag. In here, I'm going to have a href, and the href is me referencing the place I want to go when I click on the anchor tag. So the anchor tag is holding you so that when you click, it will direct you to a particular location. What location do I want to go to when I click on home? I want to go to the instance page. What location do I want to go to when I click on about? I want to go to the about page. What location do I want to go to when I click on services? I want to go to the services page. And what location do I want to go to when I click on contact? I want to go to the contact page. Now, if I come here and I refresh and I click on about, it takes me to a broken link that has nothing there. Why does this have nothing there? It has nothing there because in the the index page of no. .html. I have nothing else here that says about. How do I get about if I am here? I first have to open the pages folder and I'll get to about. That means here I have to open the pages folder. And when I open the pages folder, I'll see about. So it means here I have to have pages slash services, pages slash what? Contact. Now, over here, I refresh this, when I click here, it takes me to a blank about us page, okay? A blank about us page. Now, after the navigation, I want to create a div again. I want to keep the div. <laughs> We have body, we have body space text. So that here, I'll close the div tag. Then in here, I have H1. And this is home page. So that people know that this is my home page. So I refresh this. I see this. So here I can see navigation bar, the unordered list. Here I can see the div tag of a H1 in there saying this is my home page. Now, if I click on
the about. Okay, I want you to take me to the about page. You need to have all of this information. But the navigation information here is wrong. Because inside the about section here, there is no index here. For you to get to index, you must leave the folder before you get to index. So I must tell the computer that leave the folder you are in. And when you leave there, you will find what index. The about us is inside the pages folder. Hence, I don't need to bring pages here anymore. I don't need the pages here anymore because all of them are found in here. They don't have to go to another folder called pages when they are here. They are already in pages. But for you to get indexed, you must leave. That is the job of these three dots over here. Now, when I come down here, I want to tell the person he is inside the what? About page. So the individual is in the about page. When I come do this, here I can leave everything as it is, but I'll just change this section here to contact. So that they, I know I'm in the contact page. And here I can leave everything as it is and then change this page to what? Services. Because I'm in the services page. Yes. Now, when I come in here and I refresh and I click on home, I'm in home, about, I'm in about. I click home, I'm in home again. I click services, I'm in services. I click contact, I'm in contact. So everything is linked together. All, all my four pages are linked together and they are working like how they should be working. And it is working like how it should be working. Now, I must add the CSS to it. So I'll go to the CSS page. Now, the CSS is in an external file. So it means that if I do everything in the external file, I must link it to the page that the CSS will be working on. And remember what I said, the CSS will be targeting various elements. What elements will I be targeting? Yeah. I'll be targeting the star. And then in here, I have, I have this body over here, whereby I am telling the computer I'm targeting all in the staff. So I'm targeting all the elements that are on my page at that time. And what do I want to do with all the elements? I want the margin to be set to what? Zero pixels. I want to be set to zero pixels. I want the padding. to be set to zero pixels. I want the box size. Now, this is very important. You see, in life, everything that is in the box is easier to, to manipulate and to, to pack. That is why ship containers, for example, you can see that they are all square-like. There are no other shape because it is easier to pack them and to manage and operate them in that kind of structure. So I'm telling the computer that every structure I have Make sure that it has box sizing and it looks like a box or it feels like a box. So when I come to the screen here again and I come to the home page, you realize that everything should be grouped into the center. Why are they not grouped together? And why is my CSS not taking effect? Why? It's not taking effect because I did not link my page to my CSS code I have here. How will I do that? I would use the link tag to tell the computer that I am adding a style sheet and that style sheet is coming from the location called styles. 
and link does not have a close tag, so I close it like this. So now, when I come and refresh my page again, you can see that everything has been shifted to the center because I've removed all the spaces between them and I've made everything a box. So you can see that they are all stacked up one on top of the other. Now, I am going to tell the computer again that I'm going to tell the computer again that where you have the class name called dot box dot body hyphen text. So in my heading here, I have dot body hyphen text here, and it is a class. That is why I brought the dots in front. Over here, display flex font family is equal to sans serif. Align all my items into the center. I want to justify content. So align, align items on the, the vertical plane and then justify align items on the horizontal plane. So here I have justify content to also center. And then I want a space from the top to be 250 pixels, okay? So if I come in here and I refresh, I can see that the space from here to here will be 25 pixels. I have justified it center, center. So again, if I take this one out and save and refresh the screen again, you see that it has shifted it here. So it has centered it on the, uh, the, the vertical plane, but justify will also center it on the horizontal plane. So if you are in the middle in the in the in the vertical plane and in the horizontal plane, then technically you are in the absolute middle. So I'm telling the computer that move this thing in the center here and in the center of this two. So now it is bang in the middle. And then I want the distance from the top to be 25, um, 250 pixels. So I have targeted this element in which I have over here using my CSS. Now, I have to target the navigation bar, so the nav bar. I'm going to tell the computer to display everything in a flex. That means to display everything side to side. But when it is done doing that, it's to justify the content that it is displaying for it to have space around then it should align all the items in the center. That means the content of it, you should put it inside the center. I'm telling you that, you no, know, whenever you have a screen, the minimum height for that screen, so if it is a phone, a tablet, whatever it is, whatever screen size you have, 8% of that screen size should be dedicated to the navigation bar. Then we want a background, a background color of teal. And also, I want the font family or my font family to be sans serif. So with this information here, if I check my code, my navigation bar should be side by side. So this side is the side by side here. It is centered, it is sans serif, and the background is teal. And what do I mean by side by side? Because inside my navigation bar, this here is one side, and this here is another side. Both of them are inside the navigation bar. So they are side by what? Side. Also, I don't want it to look like this. So here, I'll go back to my styles. And I'll tell the computer again that go and take the class name called heading. And when you take the class name called heading, I want you to make the color of anything in there to be what? White. I want you to do text transformation to it and make all the text uppercase. So all the writing there will now be capital letter. I want you to give spacing in the text so that it will be one pixel spacing. So uh, letter spacing should be five pixels. And then here, I want the font size to be 20 pixels. 
So over here, I want this. And you can see how my navigation bar looks like a nice menu. Or in, if this was a, a site I was doing, this would wear my title, you know, let's say, uh, uh, Total Ghana or whatever, the logo, this is where the logo would be. And then over here, this doesn't look like a navigation bar in which I'm doing. So I have to fix that. So here, I'm going to tell my computer again that the navigation bar, you can see that they are all one on top of the other. To make them all appear in a straight line, what will I use? I would use a uh, flex. I'll tell the computer that you should go for the link items in the navigation bar, and then it should use what? Flex. Now, this alone will immediately transform that section to look like this, right? To look like this in a straight line. But over here, I want to justify content and I want space around so that equal space would be given around the content in which I am doing over here. But nothing is taking effect. Why? Because the space for the content to be generated is not there. So I'm going to tell the computer that the width of that section should be 30% of the whole width. So over here, when I come back in here and I refresh what I have, 30% of the space will be dedicated to this section here. And we can see we have equal space around them for them to display. Now I'm going to focus on the list item itself. So here, dot nav links space li. So I'm telling the computer, and here's where the combinations come in, that when you go to look for this class name, inside it, go and look for the list item. So here, I'll look for this class name. Inside it, I'll look for the tag called what? li. And that tag, I want you to provide a style on it called style space, list space style. And I want it to be what? None. So this list style will help you control the styles in which you have on the link items. If it should be a dot, if you want it to be an arrow, if you don't want it to be there at all. So for example, over here, we can see that we have dots beside everything, noting that these are list items. But if I refresh, the dots are gone because I said I do not want any style on my list item. Now I can go for the now links again, and this time go and target the A tag alone. And in targeting the A tag, I want the color of the A tag to be white. I want the text decoration of that section to be none. I want the letter spacing to be three pixels. I want the font weight to be bold. I want the font size to be 14 pixels. And then finally, I want the padding, the spacing between them and their container to be 14 pixels by 16 pixels. That means the top half will be 14. The bottom half would be what? 16. So if I check this again, I should have something that looks like this. White, no lines, and who will even let you know that this is an LI tab? I'm not done. Over here, I want the situation whereby every place that I said here, you see, I want to tell the computer that this here has a class This here has a class called active, which means that this would be my active you know, button. So here I'm going to say dot nav links space li, and inside the li, you're looking for the a tag, and you're looking for the a tag that has the class called active. So again, when I go to nav links, I'm looking for the tag li, I'm looking for A, but I'm looking for the class that is what? Active. And when I find that, I should give it a background color 
of light green. That is 4CAFC. 4C. 50. So light green. It means that when I come here and I refresh, I should have this being what? Light green. Let me see. Everything here is correct. So links L I A. Um, yeah, it's fine. So I come back here. And here I have what? A here. You can see that the green is here, showing that this is the active one. Can you see that? So that if I'm clicking on home, then I know that I have clicked on home. I'm here at home. So the inactive ones, I want to do some small animation here. So I'm using the nav links again. And I'm telling the computer that whenever the A tag is hovered on, so whenever somebody uses the, the mouse to go on top of it, and it is not the active one. So all of them, apart from the active one, I want you to give me a background color of light sea green. So again, when I'm here, I refresh this and I hover on it. We see that some light sea green will be there. But when I come on this one, there'll be nothing there because I said everything apart from that one. So everything here would be light sea green apart from this one, which would be green on its own. Now, inside these elements too, means that if you are in about us, then then about us would be the active one. So I have to make this the active one. And then contact would be the active one here. Oh, sorry. Contact. And then uh, this would be the active one here. So I can save them. So now, when I click here and click on Home, I get this beautiful interface. When I click here, look at the interface I'm getting. Why does this interface not match the home interface? It doesn't match because here, I haven't told it that I am linking the text over here. So again, inside the head tag, I must use link. I must tell the computer that I am using a resource that is of style sheet, and it can go and find what I'm looking for in dot dot slash what style. Why is it not just style? Because if I say style, then it means they are in the same location. Because they are not in the same location and I have to leave the folder I'm in to go and look for it here, then I use what? Dot, dot. Tell the computer to leave there and go and find it. Now I'll slash this. So that means that inside here again in my about, because the styles have been appealed and the CSS uh, names are the correct names I use that they match have the same format here. You can see that about is here. When I click home, it shows me that home is the major one. And the one which is not the one which is active. So you can see that now home, when I hover, it has a light greasy, sea green or sea green over there around it. Very, very beautiful. Now, I have to give the contact and services the same effect. So now I have this window whereby I have this, that, that, and then each one I click. Each one in which I click has the beautiful effect showing and I can navigate through each page no matter where I am. You guys are supposed to watch the video design your own and interface using the assignment I gave you. So the assignment I gave you, I told you to design a, 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 design a, a, a profile page for your friend who was sitting beside you. You are doing that one. When you are done with that one, you use this design to do another one. Beautifully designed with CSS for your same friend. So I will check the one you did without CSS and I'll check the one you did with CSS. You can use the same design. Of course, you need to change the 
picture quality, the colors and stuff, and you need to design for your friend. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yes, yes sir. Again, the class was recorded, so I'll be sending you guys the video. You have to watch, redo, replay, so on and so forth, and redesign to yourself. You can pick a company, redesign, and practice. Practice is very important in this course. The more you practice, the better you become. We will try as much as possible to use our time to do a lot of practice and a lot of things. When we come next week, we would see how we can use CSS yeah. to design a calculator, use CSS to design different kind of shapes yeah. that we have, so that the next week we will start to learn JavaScript and how we can add JavaScript to the web we are doing. As you can see today, I added the HTML and CSS together. So it means going forward, we'll be doing all of them together. It is important to read the notes because I will not come and stand here and read them with you. I am expecting you to go and read them. And the day in which I'll know you didn't read them will come. Remember, this semester, we only have 10 weeks. Today is the third week. So we may be up seven more meetings and we are done. So please, let's be serious. And the gentleman who are muted for no reason, you have minus 10 from your final grade. I want to make that point very clear. So when it comes and you see 10 marks that are missing from your final grade, know that that is why. That is why. Okay, so please, thank you all for coming. If there are no questions, and I know there are no questions, then I'll end the class. A question. You have a question? Yes. What is it? Yes, just go over the assignment. The assignment was this. You were to design a personal profile site for your friend. So you were to design a website for your friend using HTML. And that assignment, I'm collecting it when we meet next week, individually, one by one. That means that next week, if you come without a computer, you don't have the assignment. You have an automatic zero. You know, there, there's no time for wasting. You understand? Now, after I take the assignment, I will take the second assignment, which was you to use HTML and CSS with this design. So you have multiple pages. So here you say, oh, welcome about Gladys. Is Gladys, who, 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 who here do I like? Oh, I, I have someone called Hayford. So a friend of mine is called Hayford. So we have Hayford, uh, about Hayford, jobs Hayford can do, how to contact Hayford. Then here you have things about here for you a picture here some writing there you know style the thing made the thing look nice made the thing look like something you want to sell you never have something like that yeah yes sir so one without css one with css again the more you design the better you become the better you see good design the better you see bad design as of now, it's not about who does what is best. It's about who executes and who understands concepts. The more you practice, the better you will become. Exactly. Anyway, if there's no other question, then bye bye again. Is there a question? No, sir. Hey, Charlie, you guys are you're the best classes. No question, Charlie. Charlie, you are the you. Anyway, bye bye. Enjoy your week. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Next week would be online. Hey, next week will be in person, right? So we we'll meet in person. Uh, the class rep of this class, the link you send for your class group, it's not working. So send the correct link for your class. You have added me. I don't see. You haven't added me. I don't see. You haven't added me. Please add me, okay? Let me also be part of the group, okay?
Wow, wow.